The polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, can target and amplify any specific nucleic acid from complex biological samples. The procedure can be used for diagnosis to determine whether a clinical sample contains a nucleic acid sequence that is known to occur only in a specific pathogen. Or, the laboratory scientists may use PCR to amplify and recover large quantities of a specific gene for research. To perform PCR, you must already know the sequence of the nucleic acid you wish to amplify. Then you define the boundaries of this target sequence by identifying short sequences at each end on opposite strands. Here, the boundaries of the target sequence are indicated by violet and green highlighting. If you move from these sequences in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, the direction of normal DNA synthesis, the violet highlighting extends along one strand, and the green highlighting extends along the complementary strand. It is difficult to show how PCR works using this double helix representation of DNA, so the diagram will be converted to a more easily understood ladder image of the DNA. In addition to the clinical sample, the PCR reaction requires three ingredients. First, there must be a massive supply of each of the four nucleotides. Second, the user must add a large supply of small synthetic primers that are designed to hybridize to the boundary sequences at either end of the targeted DNA. The primers are the ingredients that make the reaction specific. Since only DNA that lies between these two primers will be synthesized in the PCR reaction. Third, the reaction requires a DNA polymerase enzyme. For PCR, the polymerase is isolated from a bacterium that normally grows in the sea around hot geothermal vents on the ocean floor. The bacterium is called Thermus aquaticus and the polymerase is called TAC polymerase for short. This exotic enzyme is used because it is not inactivated at the high temperatures generated in a PCR reaction. All of these elements are mixed together in appropriate proportions and placed in an instrument called a thermocycler. This instrument can be programmed to change the temperature of the mixture through a series of repetitive cycles. The temperature of the reaction in this demonstration is represented in the lower right panel. In the first round of PCR, the temperature is raised to a point at which the DNA is melted and the complementary strand separates from one another. The temperature is then lowered to a level at which complementary strands can reassociate. However, since the primers are present in the mixture, at huge numbers, they are most likely to bind at the complementary sites when the strands reassociate. As the temperature is lowered further, the polymerase finds the three prime ends of the primers, and the enzyme begins to add nucleotides to the end of the primer using the complementary strand as a template. The same process occurs when DNA replicates in normal cell division. At the end of round 1 of PCR, there will be two copies of the target sequence for every one that was present in the clinical sample. You can keep track of the amplification in the panel that will appear on the lower left. The same process is repeated in the second round of PCR. The thermocycler automatically heats the sample to separate the complementary strands of DNA, including those that have just been synthesized. The temperature is lowered to allow primers to bind at their specific sites and to prime synthesis of complementary strands by TAC polymerase when the temperature is lowered again. In the third round, the same cycling of the reaction temperature occurs with melting of the strands, binding of primers when the temperature is lowered, 
a new strand synthesis when the strands are primed for DNA polymerase to begin adding nucleotides. At the end of round 3, there are now 8 double strand copies of the target sequence where there was originally only one. The enlarging frame from the lower left will now show what happens with successive cycles of PCR. With each cycle, the number of copies of the target sequence doubles. So there will be 16 copies after 4 cycles, 32 copies after 5 cycles, and 64 copies after 6 cycles. By the time the thermocycler has completed 40 cycles, the primers and nucleotides will likely be exhausted, but there will theoretically be 10 to the 12 copies. The target sequence will have been amplified a trillion times. This level of amplification produces enough of the specific DNA that it can now be visualized by gel electrophoresis. The large smear of DNA at the top of the gel represents the complex DNA that was present in the clinical sample. However, a new smaller band appears in samples taken from the later cycles of PCR. For diagnostic laboratory purposes, the amplified DNA can be detected and quantified by more efficient and simpler methods than gel electrophoresis. One of these methods is discussed in an accompanying program.